Episode 162 of the Interpretation Station is called to order. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, how are we all doing on today, 23rd of the 23rd of January 2023? Hope you're all keeping warm because out here where I live, uh, Switzerland, pretty much Central Europe, well, uh, Western Central Europe, shall we say, it's absolutely freezing so i've drawn the short straw i've had to take the dog for a walk twice today out in the the open fields the tundra as it were and i tell you uh, I'll, I'll tell you a, a good english idiom okay if you're a, non, a non-native english speaker it's not one you're going to hear uh in the un that's for sure I, i'd be very surprised if i did but anyway it's a good one to know outside it would freeze the balls of a brass monkey okay if anyone says to you Whew, it's brass monkeys out there it means it's uh, what, what he's what they're saying is it's it's rather cold okay like i say probably not going to hear that though in the hallowed halls of uh, of the un uh, anyway so today's episode what are we doing so it's the third part third and final part or third and final episode that's based on the sunday at six workshop that was uh, that i gave on the 15th of january uh so eight days ago uh, where we covered texts from spanish from french and from russian i've already posted the uh, the parts the spanish and french part so i'm putting the russian part up this time um, there was no Sunday at 6 workshop yesterday on the 22nd. Sorry, I could not make the time for it. But I will be holding one just to let you know next, this coming Sunday. So that will be, what, January the 29th. Okay, so you have been warned, all right? So I'll put it up on the LinkedIn. I'll un- confirm the announcement on Wednesday or Thursday. Okay, but just so that I, I, I'm giving you, as Americans say, a heads up. So I think it's the last one before the freelance test, if I'm if I'm not mistaken. So uh, make sure you're there, okay? And then, so like I said, for this episode, we're going to be focusing on the Russian statement that was deli- that was delivered at the plenary uh, at COP27. Now, the Russians tend to be, they don't tend to be the most active delegation on issues related to climate change. Uh, they'll tend to set out their main, you know, their sort of fundamental position, um, but genuine, genuinely, they'll probably they'll take, they'll tend to take a bit of a back seat, shall we say? And perhaps especially so this time around, um, they were very, you know, they weren't very active at all, other than in the plenary. I guess there's more, they have perhaps more pressing concerns right now. Um, but anyway, it's still good to know exactly where they stand. Get and it's good to have a sort of mastery and proper knowledge of the key vocab, okay, coming from Russian into English, and of course the key, uh, the key acronyms. So uh, I think the acronym, today's acronym of the day, RAKIK, do you know RAKIK? Ramochnaya Konvencia po izmenenju klimata. Got to know that one. You could easily get a, a, you know, they could just drop a, a Russian climate change speech statement for you in a, a freelance exam, or for that matter, in a SELP, in a, you know, for the, the permanent for the competitive exam so you need to know where you stand okay so as we've done before the first, i'm going to start by just playing the recording from the sunday at six session we got through about two-thirds uh, of the text there was just the three of us it was me uh nina diana and young barney big shout out to barney barney it was his first time in a sunday at six session the lad's only 20 years old uh he's still at uni very keen guy obviously though and uh, lovely pleasure to have you, Barney, and uh, hopefully uh, see you again. And also to Diana and Nina, who of course are well, they're, I was, yeah, they're sort of regulars. They're pretty, they're pretty damn regular. Big shout out to you two as well. Uh, so as I say, we'll start off with the recording from the Sunday six session, and then we will revert back to me. Uh, I will finish things off at the uh, on the other side. So uh, without any further ado, let's see what we discussed at the Sunday at six session. Let's get started then so yeah so these are these statements from today they're, they're all you weren't here when i did the introduction they're all from like the the, the, the cop 27 that was in sharm el sheikh in november so i was working there um the russians weren't very active at that cop so this was this is taken but this is taken from the high level segment and uh, there's a lot of useful uh sort of acronyms and uh, expressions here um that you know, none of you are doing the. I don't think you, uh, Diana, Nina, are you? Are either of you doing any other tests or not? 
actually i'm yeah. i'm doing one test but it's uh, from actually it will be a french booth okay for the uh, the sell uh, or the freelance for the freelance yeah the one in february yes okay so you can try going in a french when we do this if it makes uh, if yes, that makes because sense i just missed I, 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 I thought there was uh, spanish so it was my mistake i would have come earlier all oh, right right uh, don't worry don't worry Okay, well let's uh, let's start off with with uh, with Nina then. You're sure. I just wanted to say as I'm joining on short notice, didn't have time to to, to look prepare. at. Oh, okay. Yeah, to Who... prepare and as it's as English is my C language. Oh, okay. I'm still right, I'm right. still not confident enough okay. to to work into it, so I prefer to just wait listen. for a little bit. Okay. Well, go okay, mm -hmm. Diana, why don't you start? Well, Arnie, actually, do, you, do, you, do you understand French? If if Diana goes into French, you understand French? <laughs> yes, of course. Does Barney? Uh, do you want me to, oh, to translate into French? Barney's French is un peu limité, but he can Okay, we'll French, see. Okay, well, we'll, my uh, French we'll... is active, so I'm highly interested in listening okay, to my well, colleague. We'll we'll work it out. So anyway, Diana, you go into French. Feel free to go into French. Well, actually, I I, I was going to go into English, well, because I don't know. But whatever, whatever you, you prefer. prefer, whatever. No, no, it's up to you. It's up to you. No, I'm. <laughs> <laughs> go, into French, go into French, go into French, it's fine. Okay. Premièrement, je tiens à, euh, à saluer la présidence de la République. Uh, um, uh, no, I, I was preparing into, into, into English. So I, okay, I just... do into English then, fine, uh, if, if that's easier. So first of all, let me welcome the presidents of the Arab Republic of Egypt on the 17th, uh, on the COP17. And to highly, I would like to highly... Um, evaluate their um, uh, hospitality, hospitality, sorry, and their efforts uh, for the success of this uh, conference. Okay, so let me just uh, say a couple of years. So first of all, like, so this is a bit true. So this is privetstvot. Okay, usually in, in, in Russian, we see a privet, which is like you think welcoming. But the, so the thing is, this is obviously in Egypt. It's not the Russians that are welcoming anyway. It's the, the, the Egyptians, right, that are doing the welcoming. Um, so and or maybe commend, but one way of getting around that is you can just sort of throw in like an extend to the presidency of the Syrian Arab Republic, um, my our greetings, okay? That buys you a bit of time. We offer to the Arab Republic of Egypt our greetings, uh, our congratulations before, because if you just say welcome, like a guest, huh. the guests don't welcome the host. That doesn't make sense. So that's that's one way. Or if, or if you've said it, you, I can imagine this just sort of throwing the saying, Maybe doing the same as what you did. I want. I want to welcome uh, the the presidency of the Arab Republic of Egypt and congratulate them or whatever, on commend them on. You can you know just throw yeah, in. Congratulate and. is better, but so extent means uh, we ha somehow uh, diminish this um, authoritative. Approach? The extend or the offer just buys you a little bit of time ah, to okay, uh, work out okay. in your head the context because I say you're not really welcoming in English. We wouldn't. The guest wouldn't welcome the host. It doesn't quite make sense. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Exactly. Uh, right. you can just say to commend, okay? Commend. Mm -hmm. That's what I would say. Commend. So, commend them on their hospitality and the efforts towards successful holding of the conference. And again, maybe out of courtesy, you want to say, I say, the, the Arab Republic of Egypt the first time around, then later just call them Egypt, Egypt. Don't worry about saying the Arab Republic every time. Uh, carry on a little bit more. The world has significantly significantly changed after Glasgow. We since Glasgow since yeah. mm, since Glasgow. Uh, yeah. We um mm, well losing sight of our temperature oh. objectives uh, according to Paris Agreement, and we see a lo lots of no lots of it's not a good word. We, we see many. Controversies as for main questions of climate agenda, and at the same time we see many artificial constraints that make the quality of life of the population in so many countries quite poor. Okay, so if I was, you know, if I was going like this, interpret, I'd say, you know, the world has changed significantly since Glasgow. Now it's tricky. See this bit here. I would probably say, you know, we are straying, we are straying, we are drifting from, mm. 
achieving the temperature goals yeah. under the Paris Accords. Now, the thing is, you see, an English speaker, we probably wouldn't phrase it like that. You know, we would probably say an English speaker would really say uh, our chances of achieving the Paris goals are diminishing is probably what a native English speaker would say. But you would have to wait until you heard the end of the uh, Paris Paris of a to get to to actually say that. And you don't have time when you're interpreting to play around like that. So again, I would just be processing the words. I was saying we are at the sir. We're getting further away. I mean, if, if nothing better comes, then you could say that. Like, but you know, we are straying from, we're drifting from meeting the temperature goals under the Paris Accords. Meeting goals, good collocation, right? Hmm. I think we're, you know we're we're stuck in differences over the chief issues of the climate agenda, uh, and at the same time we are seeing vidienia introduction of artificial you said agranicienia constraints uh, restrictions. No, uh, I would probably say uh, which are which are which are which are worse so good worsening. Uh, exacerbating, uh, probably in this context, worsening the, the, the quality of life for the populations in many countries. Okay. Uh, Barney, if there's anything you want to ask at any point or any words, feel free, okay? Yeah, I will. All, all, uh, all good so far, we're in my looked at territory. But I'm okay. Uh, okay, let's, uh, let's, uh, well, I'll tell you what, Barney, why don't you try the next bit uh, from Miravoy Energeticzki Krizis. So the global energy crisis, which began in 2021 after the COVID-19 pandemic, could slow down the global energy transition. I don't know what that is. And hinder mm-hmm. the achievement of the UN's sustainable development goals. Okay, that's pretty good knowledge, generally. Yeah, the global energy crisis started in 21 after the COVID pandemic. Can uh, Zator can slow down... Or as it, always a good set of uh, synonyms to remember, to hamper, to hinder, and impede. Those are three. I, in my episodes, I don't know how many of my episodes you've watched, but I always sort of say, you know, H, H, and I, hamper, hinder, and impede. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Uh, the global energy transition, I guess the energy transition they're talking about is the move from fossil fuels to renewables. Okay. No. And but again, that's like very, that's basically a uh, synonym, isn't it, of Zatormazid. So again, ham. One of the other words that pre- pre- prevent us from achieving, yeah. hinder us re- achieving the SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals. You can just call them the, the SDGs. Uh, keep going. That was that was a good debut. Yeah, it's it will probably get worse. The <laughs> achievement of the goals of the UN, da, 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 da. Um, rising inflation and public debt, like the increase of inflation and of public debt, um, creates is create are creating additional challenges for developing nations and it and makes it it makes it important like never before to this bit i struggle with taking like increase yeah the volume increase the, the, the yeah songs. okay um or be more of not a word i've but, but that's a good try yeah yeah of the of climate financing and to um ensure to provide maybe easier access um to the necessary resources well that's pretty good try i tell you what for how old are you i'm 20 Dude, that's that's pretty good and you started learning yeah okay so yeah, yeah. rising inflation so and you say dog. we say public debt okay so the russians sort of say they couldn't have state debt we're more like to say public debt national debt creating further slogeness they'll tend to say complexities or problems for developing countries and make it more important than ever you know to step up to increase a biome of volumes levels maybe i would probably maybe say levels of climate financing climate funding and providing you know ensuring uh you said easier access i mean of a sort of the high register where it may be streamlined access to the necessary mm. resources, but the way you put it, it was really good. Yeah, it, got, it, it, it does. Feel, it does. It's, it's more high register than I'm used to. I've had. To, uh, yeah, I can imagine. I can imagine. You probably don't get. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but... Highlighting on my page, but yeah, to the necessary resources. Uh, can I actually try into French then? If you don't yeah, mind. Go on then. Yeah, sure. Go on. Go think, on. Yeah, as I, as I'm on my phone, my video should be working now. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if you see me. 
Yeah. We can see I'll, I'll just let Barney finish this paragraph and then oh, I'll, I'll give it sorry. to you, okay? Sorry. Yeah, sorry for interrupting. That's okay. So, Barney, just finish. So, um, in an especially vulnerable position are those on less developed and developing island in developing island states. Okay, yeah, there's absolutely, I mean, yeah, you're not going to know this unless you, you work in this. So, it's a good try, okay? So, in a particularly vulnerable position are the LDCs. So those are called the least developed countries. And now Malia Ostrovnia Razvivashisi Gosudarsva are the SIDS. Small island developing states. Okay. So these are two categories of countries that you have at the UN, the LDCs and the SIDS. And so LDC being least developed countries. Being Naimenia Razvitia. Naimenia Razvitia Gosudarsva. Yep. And when interpreting in the UN, you would be perfect. It would be perfectly legitimate for you to go straight in with the LDCs and the SIDS. So that's a really good try. Uh, yeah, what? Yeah. Um, I was just going to say. See, um, often in uh, when you go from Russian to English, for me, um, I will try. I, I will when something got, starts with V, I will drop the V. And because it, it sometimes makes the syntax easier, but you have to be able to flip things around later. So what I might yeah. say is a particularly vulnerable pos uh, position faces the LDCs and the SIDs. OK, so this is now that, I mean, this is quite a high level of interpretation I'm talking about here. But what you did is perfectly fine. It's just sometimes you'll find that it's easier um in English, to drop the V. When they talk about Vdakladia, what they'll have in Russian, it'll be like the V and then the noun, and then like a reflexive. So often in English, it's more uh, normal to talk about the report talks about this, as opposed to saying in the report, it is said that. So it just makes your, you, you, you'll find, I wouldn't worry about this at your level, Barney, but you'll find that it makes your, your, the, the sentence flow more easily. Otherwise, uh, doing it that way. Some, Switch, switch something around. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Don't reach the point of it. Yeah, okay. Nina. The Russian Federation has been made a consequent policy and active to prevent the climate climatiques and to adapt to its consequences néfastes in the respect of the CCNUCC. If I say correct. Je suis pas sûr. Elle accord de Paris. Okay, Nous... that's a fair. So just a, so I was going to say Rakik. That is a real. Uh, there are none of you that are going to take the exam, but so that's a really important thing to be able to recognise. This is more for the people watching on the episode on YouTube. Make sure you recognise your Rakik. Ramachna Konvencija. So that's the UN, uh, the UNF Triple C. Okay, Ramachna Ramachna Konvencija pa izmenjenje klimata. Make sure you recognize that's a really important um, acronym. Okay. Neblagopriatni uh, pasledstvi. Barney, what would you say in English? Can you give me a hazard? Can you hazard a guess? Uh, I mean, actually, I could try, but I. You better I'm... try. Uh, that's something you hear a lot. You, you hear this all Priyatna accepted blagger. Thanks. Blagopriatni is good stuff. So ne blagopriatni is bad stuff. So how, what's a way you might, what's a good adjective you might use? Uh, what's this? Negative. <laughs> it's not... Adverse, detrimental, harmful, <laughs> that sort of thing. Okay, the harmful <laughs> impact, the detriment, the adverse impact. Okay. Go on, Nina. Ubiajdini the. Nous sommes persuadés qu'il est nécessaire de garder la Convention en tant que base de, de coordination multilatérale de mesures de lutte avec les changements climatiques. Oui, la lutte contre le, le changement climatique. So in English, I would probably say, uh, I literally, we are convinced it is, it, it, we are convinced of the need to maintain the convention as the key forum, the key platform for Plashadka, for multilateral, for multilateral Saglasavanya mm Mir -hmm. harmonization of measures to mm -hmm. combat climate change. Now, you might find, again, when interpreting, 
um, that you might want to just drop. It, you might in English you might just say it's necessary. Okay. Sometimes when they say we think, we believe, those are sort of things that sometimes you can drop if you need to, if you're falling behind. You say it's necessary to maintain the convention as a key forum for multilateral harmonization of measures to uh, to combat climate change. Uh, okay, Go a bit, let's do a bit more, Nina. Mm -hmm. L'année dernière, notre pays a développé toute une panoplie d'instruments pour réduire uh, des... Ah, ça c'est l'émission les émissions, merci beaucoup, pour réduire les, émi les émissions des gaz à effet de serre dans de, dans de divers secteurs de l'économie et atteindre la neutralité, euh, la neutralité carbone. carbone. Yeah, that's it, Car yeah, neutralité <laughs> carbone. So, so here I might say in English, over the last year, my country has, you see, ah, this, Barney, this is what I'm saying. So, в нашей стране разработан. So this kind of is an example I was saying earlier. I would probably say this in the last year, our country has developed because if you say in our country in the last year in our country we have seen the development it makes it a bit stilted the whole thing so that's the sort of thing where i'll just go put it into a uh a nominative our country has developed a broad now she said pan, panoply for nabor that's very good for french a broad spectrum of instruments a, a, a large variety of instruments to reduce uh greenhouse gas emissions uh, in various sectors of the economy and towards achieving uh, carbon neutrality. Okay. Go on. A little bit more. Zapushin mm -hmm. Une expérience de création dans marché de carbone lancée dans une région russe a permis uh, de lancer la création uh, des prix sur... Um, les émissions des gaz à effet de serre et euh, donner une impulsion financière pour leur réduction. OK, this is, this is a quite a tricky, this is a yeah. tricky sentence yeah. because um, this is this uh, um, this is all like the noun here is Zapushni в одном из регионов России эксперимент pour... OK, this is basically the noun, OK? So, uh, the, um, so what we do is so actually, I think I think Nina did it the same in French. She said she turned the zapush, the adjective, into a noun. She said la lancée. Mm -hmm. So this is what I would do. I say the law. I would say the launch in one of the regions of Russia of mm -hmm. an experiment to uh, establish a uh, the, um, hydrocarbon market has allowed us to introduce tino brazovania. What did you say in French? Um, I think I paraphrased it, uh, and I said something long and inefficient. Okay. Uh, it's pricing. Long... It's basically pricing. That's correct, yeah. It's basically allowed us to price. So I would say, mm -hmm. so the launch in one of the regions of Russia of an experiment to establish a hydrocarbon market had, has allowed us to launch pricing for Vibrosi Parnikovic Gazov, uh, mm -hmm. Greenhouse gas emissions, or you know what, if, if it's easier for you to say, just say CO2 emissions, CO2 emissions, greenhouse gas emissions, pretty much the same damn thing. For some reason, it seems to me easier to say CO2 rather than saying greenhouse gas, but <coughs> I'm just saying. Uh, and to, yeah, to give a further financial stimulus or incentive to, uh, to reduce them, or yeah, incentive, perhaps, for impulse is the best word. Financial uh, stimulus, financial incentive. Uh, okay, let's, uh, yeah, just keep going to the end of the paragraph. Mm -hmm. So you'll see, and you'll, let's, it'll be interesting to see what you do with Razdrabati Vaitsa. You might want to take note of this, Barney, to see what Nina does mm -hmm. here. Nous sommes en train de créer uh, une, uh, un projet, une carte, pour uh, réaliser une stratégie à long terme du développement. Euh, bas en émissions de carbone, qui prévoit euh, des mesures de décarbonisation du secteur énergétique, de, euh, de l'énergie à base d'hydrogène, de l'électrification des transports et euh, la hausse de l'efficacité énergétique. 
Uh, I would put amélioration, but maybe for provisioning, would that not be better? Améli pour améliorer mm -hmm. l'efficacité. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I'm just thinking. So what? Yeah, what? 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 Nina did there. So this is Razdrabativa. Again, this is one of these problems that you get with Russian when you go into English when they start with these reflexives. Um, it's actually easier in French because you can turn this reflexes into on on a développé. I, which you can't actually do in in English. We don't have one that you can't say one has developed a roadmap. So, because we know the contact is telling us about what Russia has done, we'll often say we have developed a roadmap. Or if you want to play really safe, there has been the development of a roadmap. Uh, so it's yeah, you French guys, you French native speakers, it's much easier for you because you can turn those reflexives. I'm, Ninety, I'm sorry. Nine times oh. out of ten into on. Sorry, oh, yes. But uh, on is it's a it's a different register. No, I I wouldn't use it in a speech like that. You wouldn't. You can't say that on a developer. I don't know, um, Nina. What do you think? I think on, on a developer. Yeah, developer. It's, it might be oh. like so. Um, I don't know, but I maybe I wouldn't either. But I might be mistaken. It, yeah, me, me too. I just feel reticent to to use mm -hmm. it. But maybe I'm not right. I okay check. okay i thought that, okay okay um uh, during my classes like for french b i was given advice to like go simple with um noun verb and then all the rest so i have a sort of a reflex just to start by je nous vous mm. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's one idea. Yeah, okay. So mm -hmm. the French natives have a better feel for this than I, yeah. I, I always thought with these reflexives that in French or in Spanish, you could just immediately match it. Certainly with Spanish, you could just say desarrolla una. Mm. Um, anyway, but only you French Spanish natives would know, get that um, that nuance. But so, so in English, I would say either we have developed, if I'm sure it's just talking about what Russia has done, or if I want to play really safe, there has been the development of a roadmap to implement a long-term strategy of uh, low carbon development. I would probably break this sentence up here. Mm. Uh, so it will provide for, I would turn that um, passive into an active. It will provide for measures to decarbonize energy uh, mm. hydrogen generation, electrification of transport, and uh, enhancing or improving energy efficiency. Okay, uh, Diana. <clears throat> yeah. We pay more attention to the development of sciences and also to uh, in implementation of uh, Cutting edge technologies. Okay, that's like one thing. Maybe I, if I was to hear this, I might say, like, uh, I might say a priority for us is developing science. A priority is a word that will get you out of a lot of sort mm. of trouble within in English because the Russians have lots of different ways of saying that something is a priority uh, for, uh, in general, in the language. And so that, that word, I mean, you could say we, we, we give special attention to developing science but i think an english speaker is more like to say you know a big the top priority for us is developing science as well as um in what do you say for mm, i, I said implementation said? but better maybe some other word introducing word. sometimes i say mainstreaming as well mainstreaming. in english cutting edge technologies state-of-the-art technologies Another buzz phrase these days is frontier technologies. They often talk about frontier mm. technologies. Okay, carry Thank on. You so much. We have announced in Russia a um, decade of sciences and technologies, and we are creating a national system of monitoring of um, uh, greenhouse gases. Yep. We have allocated an unprecedentedly high um, volume of finance for the needs of digitalization and for the, the improvement of national accountability in terms of FC, FCCC. FCCC and Paris Agreement. Yeah, okay. So again, this is one of the examples that here I might just 
say I'd probably draw if I was hearing this coming in my earphones, I'd probably say, okay, Russia has declared a decade of science and technology and is creating, I would make Russia the subject, is creating option national, I would say like a nationwide system of monitoring of greenhouse gases. Uh Vidalian, we've allocated, we've set aside an unprecedented uh and we've earmarked is another good synonym for that for that con for that idea unprecedented level of financing on digitization and on uh fine tuning national account a so accountability on the Rakit, the UNFCCC and the Paris Accords. Savershens for that, you know, just improving, enhancing those are other good synonyms. Uh, go on. These steps will allow will allow us attract uh, supplementary public and private finance and attain new and more reliable scientific data on the state of global climate, which I, I wish to say global climate change. I don't know why. Right, right, right. Change, and the influence of the energy transition on the world, on the global and national economy. Okay, that's yeah. These steps will allow us to try, um, uh, allow us to attract additional uh, public and private funding, and to funding. to gain new, more reliable scientific data on the state of the global climate and the impact of the energy transition uh, on the global and uh, national economy. That's future, right? Is that future? Will allow us to. Is that, is that will allow us to, yeah. yeah will allow so just be careful yeah um certainly an exam an invigilator examiners might be looking out if you've got like the right uh tense so that is yeah that puzzle is actually a, a future tense so it's technically that these steps will allow us to attract additional yeah actually i will be going to french and maybe it would have been logical for me to pick a, a french now but you know english is so farther from the from russian that i prefer to train myself into english because it's so difficult to transform the phrases the right transformation to it right <laughs> Uh, okay, let's. So, Barney, why don't you do one more? So, we'll have one. Barney, have one, one last shot, and we'll have Nina. We'll one last shot, so. uh, okay, Barney, so just see what you can do here. Uh, we, we yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Um, oh, we, we are, we, ex yeah, we express serious, probably, problem like. Worries based on concerns, right? Okay. Um, concerns about, I guess, the the plans of separated, but it's definitely not separated states. Not separate, no. no. Sometimes it can be, but not, you know, in this context, it's certain of certain. Yeah. Uh huh. Okay, of of certain states, and wow. This is mental. Sorry. <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. Um, um and of re or well, regional. Yeah. Obiedini. I don't know what that is. So that's an association. Obiedini. Okay. Yeah. Regional associations. Yeah. To in, in, like in the revision of um previously taken okay mandatory things. Obisatist was commitment, so that's an important word. Yeah, okay. yeah, that's an important word, all right? It's a good word. Um, of Engagement, I mean, you could say as well, but commitments is the best, yeah? Yeah. Uh, pod. In the in the context of discussing this... Um, on, the pre, on the pretext. But predlogum on the pretext. Okay. On okay. Pretext of this... Uh, of the complicated geopolitical situation. Okay, no, that's a good try. So we express our serious concerns at the plans of certain states and regional associations to revise. So here, okay, what do you assumed? We would say commitments that were assumed or that were, were yeah, assumed. But that's... you know, in English, we wouldn't really say, say it. We would just say to revise earlier commitments. So if I was interpreting this, I would just leave uh, and just say yeah. that our earlier commitments on the pretext uh, 
of yeah. the difficult geopolitical situation. Uh-huh. Okay, Russia predupredala. Um, warned. Sorry, Russia warned about the negative consequences of the. Oh, I know that word. Gonka. I don't know. I forgot what race. Is that? Race. Mean, race of uh, climate ambitions. Yeah, the climate ambitions race. Yeah, so climate warned of the race. negative impact of the adverse impact, detrimental um, impact. Okay, when the Provost question. Yeah. Do you know what that means? I'm afraid not. The declaration, the proclamation. Maybe proclamation is easier sometimes to remember because of pro. So that's that. But yeah, declaration. Uh, the when the declaration of carbon. Neutrality. Yep. Um, happened. It feels a bit occurred. Yeah, um, I mean it, that's what it means, basically. Yeah. Happened without um, without a proper strategy. Yeah. And financial so resource. I don't know. That's probably. It's one of these weird compact adjective. adjectives. Yeah. Um. Obispicenia. Well, how do you, what, what word would you say for obispicenia? That's an important what, basic word that comes up all the time that you want to have like a, a solution for. Yeah, I, I'm not sure. I'm, something. So well, provision. Think... Yeah, provision. Okay, so I would probably say this. Russia has warned of the negative impact of the uh, climate ambitions race. Yeah. Uh, where declaration of carbon neutrality took place without a due strategy, without a proper strategy, or now an English speaker would probably say, or provision, or in terms of resources and financing is what an English speaker would say. Mm -hmm. But you, you know, and in the context when you're hearing this guy speaking, you you could probably just say, and with uh, without a proper strategy or resource financial provision. So you have to again, when you're interpreting, you have to make this choice that you know sometimes you can't say the give it the perfect english uh, rendition okay so no, because otherwise you risk losing you risk forgetting words and you risk falling behind Colin, uh, but do we need to really is this word provision is it necessary because we can like just that resources word. of funding uh hmm? without the due strategy or fund resource yeah actually in this context what you say yeah i mean usually when i hear obispicien yeah i i just get the feeling that's a word that the russian love too much Li yes <laughs> yes stick to it yeah and, and they want to hear and they want to hear an equivalent the other language you know your clients <laughs> yeah, exactly yeah, exactly exactly but what what you say actually does yeah without a due strategy or the resources or financing yeah technically you don't need the provision do you but anyway if it weren't for if it weren't for the complicated sort of addition of those two adjectives there i'd want to say like finance financial support rather than provision but yeah it's yeah difficult to have resource and financial if not got a yeah resource. so generally obvious pechenia when you hear obvious pechenia provision okay obvious pitch it's something provide for nina very quick i want you to do a couple of sentences now i'm gonna have to call it an evening um but let, let's just let you finish off very quick just uh Tear through a few sentences. Storon yeah. mm -hmm. I just don't see. Ah, storon erkik. Yep, storon. Like... Yep, yep. Um, I only have English now. <laughs> State parties. How do you say it in French? <laughs> the parties uh, to the convention. Les états membres. No, parties ah, to the. Non, les états membres. Parties. Les parties. Les parties. 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 Pardon. Because yeah, uh, when we we're into English, it's difficult. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Les États membres de la Convention cadre. L'État parti. L'État parti. Mm -hmm. Les États partis de la Convention cadre de l'ONU et de l'Accord de Paris ont le droit de choisir indépendamment les moyens euh, de l'obtention de leurs objectifs euh, en matière de climat. Yeah, so that's, that means basically the parties to the Convention and the Paris Accords, Imeyut Prava. Uh, are entitled to is best probably the best way to say that in English mm -hmm. are entitled to independently select uh, means for achieving their goals in the field of climate. Go on. Monsieur le Président, cette conférence détermine le progrès de nos efforts multilatéraux de lutte avec les contre les changements climatiques. That's very uh, interesting. What Nina has done here, you notice she's skipped that she's cut. She's uh, deleted the not. Okay. 
she just she turned the Danoi Confidence, made that into the subject of the sentence, and she basically said, "This conference de will determine for future." I often say, I often say, "Hold the key." This conference holds the key to future mm. progress of multilateral efforts to combat climate change, because otherwise, you, you know, in English, we don't, you know, when things depend on, you know, we tend we have subject verb object, and unfortunately, annoyingly, in 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 Russian, they they tend to switch it around. They don't say "borbasi uh, izmenjenja klimata zavisit od dan." They'll od danoj konferenciji. Rather, they start with "od danoj konferenciji zavisit." When you hear that "zavisit," then you know, okay, I need to flip, turn this around. This conference holds the key to future progress of multilateral efforts uh, to combat climate change. Do one last sentence, Mia mm -hmm. Nous sommes obligés de présenter un résultat tangible à toute la communauté internationale et aux générations futures. Yes, okay, so we are, I'll often say we are abiazni, we are duty bound, I'll sometimes say. We are duty bound to present ashutimi résultat, tangible results to the whole international community and to future generations. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, I'm afraid I'm going to have to draw this Sunday at six session to an end. Uh, I hope that you have found it useful. It was very, very useful. useful. Thank you very much. It's Thank a pleasure. You. Thank you so much. I hope, Barney, it's been useful for you. Maybe learn a few things that maybe no, you haven't I've run into it. before. I've, I've been really excited about it. No, it's really good. Okay. Well, invite your friend. We can do this. You know, uh, you invite your pals, you know, if they're, if they're interested. No, I should. I should I should share it. And I've, um, yeah, it's very I've helpful. Pl plenty of other friends us. who, uh, who, who very, study it's... some some more useful languages like French and, <laughs> and could definitely tell me. So I did make these open so anyone can come to these. Okay. Yeah. So if you, oh. you know. Okay. So let us continue to the end then of the text. So we got to, we got to here. Um, starting, so starting with развитие страны должны на деле продемонстрировать свое лидерство. So the most straightforward, this is the interesting expression here in this, in this, um, sentence is nadielie. Now the safest way to perhaps do this sentence would be to say the developed countries should through their actions uh, demonstrate their leadership and increase their level of financing resources and technologies provided to developing countries. Okay, Nadielis. I think that's the safest way to do it, through their actions. Now, this is an expression that the Russians like to say a lot, and they'll often actually say it in terms of Rasia Nyatolka Vaslavach and Vaslavach and Nadielia It doesn't matter anyway. Now, you can get fans. I sometimes get, get um, carried away on whimsical flights of fancy. I start talking about how the developed countries should uh, walk the walk and demonstrate their leadership and step up their levels of financing. Or you could say something like, now it's getting a bit controversial here. I, I, I've sort of said that, I've thought that you could get away with saying developed countries should put their money where their mouth is and demonstrate their leadership and step up their financing. Now, the problem is it's is it's a matter of register if you when you put your money where your mouth is so the people i have sort of floated that idea to have said well, it's not the right register that it's a bit colloquial shall we say i don't know it, it's pretty strong that put your money where your mouth is so i'm not going to i'm just going to leave that out there for you you decide if you want to use it um by the way for walk the walk um I must. Do the Americans say talk? Do you American guys say to walk the talk? You see, in, in in British English, it's always like this guy's always. You know, he's always talks the. He's he always talks the talk, but he never walks the walk. Okay, so he's all words, no action. But I've heard Americans also say to walk the talk, which which also kind of makes sense, right? That they can the the walk the doing what they say they're going to do. I mean, I think British English we we tend to have a tendency just to keep it. You know talk the talk and walk the walk but um anyway i'll leave that those ideas to you and you can take a decision but if you, the safest way to do that is just to say through through their actions um that idea of uh, not just in words but in deed if you, that as that as a 
a complete expression. I think we can say that in English, not just in words, but in deeds. Sounds a bit Shakespearean, sounds quite nice. Um, so anyway, it gives you a few options to think about. So where are we? Nam nyabhadima. So we need to uh, develop a single predstavljenje. Now your best, uh, generally I find nine times out of ten, the best, safest word to go for here for predstavljenje is a vision. Okay, We need to develop a single vision uh, of future climate financing. And my daughter has just started making herself a milkshake next door. I don't know if you can hear that sound. It's quite irritating. I'll just have to wait for her to finish. She'll offer me any, I wonder. Uh, and also a spravilliva, uh, fair and acceptable. So I, my inclination would perhaps be just to leave out. Here she goes again. that she's drilling through the walls. Uh, yes, an acceptable solution to the problem of loss and damage. Now, as I say, I think you could perhaps just leave out the uh, Perhaps you could say, uh, and also a fair and universally acceptable solution to the problem of loss and damage. So it's up to you, really. Patiri uh, share that that's a very important, that's become a very important element these days. Loss and damage. That was one of the, that's been a sort of bone of contention, stumbling block, uh, in these in these climate talks. The idea being uh, to set up a special fund. Mm -hmm. So loss and damage is one of I say that's been the big bones of contention. The idea being that the developing countries say that the developed countries should compensate them them, the developing countries, for any loss and damages incurred, I think, from the climate change disasters, etc., affecting them. The idea would be to set up some kind of uh, fund, and it's actually called, I think it's all done under the framework of something called the Warsaw International Mechanism uh, on Loss and Damage. So make sure you're familiar with that concept, loss and damage. I also talked about it quite a bit in the other two episodes. Важно серьезно отнестись к принятию адаптационных мер в различных регионах мира. So it's important to take seriously uh, the adoption of adaptation measures in various parts of the world, regions of the world, whatever, uh, from the equator uh, to the uh, polar regions. Polyarnych shirot, I guess literally the polar expanses, right? But I think you could just just say polar regions, adaptation measures, adaptation mitigation. These are important concepts to be familiar with when it comes to uh, stuff, climate uh, issues related to climate change. Seriosna atniestis, the sort of stock solution is, you know, to treat seriously. You would, perhaps an English speaker would say it's important to treat adaptation, adoption of ad adaptation measures seriously. Um, but again, you can just say it's important to take seriously, to treat seriously the the adoption of adaptation measures in various parts of the world. Uh, we must also zalajit asnovu. So my two, again, stock solutions for zalajit asnovu would be pave the way and set the stage. And here you could also perhaps say we should also lay the groundwork uh, for the upcoming 2023 global so I would here say a stock take. They love talking about stock take, taking stock of things at the UN. So uh, that's an important little phrase to be, again, comfortable with um, going into English. So we should also lay the groundwork for the, I think you can almost even uh, leave out Predstayashchevo, okay, because it's implicit. If it's 2023, obviously it's upcoming, right? We should lay the groundwork for the 2023 global stock take. Palnatienna zapustit. Often palnatienna, I'll, uh, if it's an adjective, I'll usually say fully fledged. But now, if you're going to turn it into an adverb, it sounds a bit weird to say full, full fledgedly launch. So you'd probably just say in English to, to fully launch 
the mechanism for cooperation uh, under Article 6 of the Paris Accords. Uh, the success of the conference will show, future right, prodemonstrated, will show that, несмотря на все разногласия, that uh, despite, our dif despite all our differences, or again, if you want to have a real high register, notwithstanding all our differences, uh, our spasobs, our ability, sabsha, together, just process it, you know, word by word, our ability to, together to uh, meet the global challenges of our time, Savdi Mienesti. Again, uh, a solution I often like to go with when I hear stuff like Savdi Mienest, the Savdi Mienemiria, if you've been watching enough uh, Interpretation Station episodes, I do like my, in this day and age, to meet the global challenges of this day and age. Sounds a bit pompous, but uh, hell, it's the UN, you're allowed to be pompous, aren't you? Uh, I thank you. So that's it. That's all. Uh, that's all that was left over for us to finish. Then uh, of that statement from the Russians. So again, uh, lots of uh, important uh, important vocab there. Uh, the Rakik. We had the LDCs and the SIDs. Greenhouse gas emissions. This is an and you know what we discussed at the. Um, Sunday at six. Sunday at six session. That that section. Uh, the uh, experiment for for formation of the oil of rinka allowed allowed to fuel the price of gas on the basis of natural gas. This is a, a, an, an initiative that I've heard elsewhere. I, I ran into it maybe in November and December in a different context. I think it was UNCTAD, uh, United Nations Commission on Trade and Development, and they were talking about this. How they've basically launched their own carbon credits market, which is essentially what it, what it comes down to. There's like been a pilot uh, project, I think, that with pricing, as they say, Tsinobrazovania na vibrasi parnikovic gazov. So just be familiar that the Russians have, are, are launching their own sort of um, a version of a, uh, a market on carbon credits. Uh, I think it was in Sakhal was it in Sakhalin? Was that the region they were running that experiment? I can't remember. But anyway, it's something just to bear in mind. And yeah, so that that's pretty much it. Go give that a practice if you haven't done so already. Hope we've learned a few new words. Please, if you have learned some new things, please put them uh, in the comment section. And like I said at the start, just uh, keep watching the LinkedIn page. I'll make the announcement for the. Um, Sunday's new Sunday at 6 workshop, okay, and other than that, like, share, and subscribe, and have a very good rest of your day, uh, and with that, all that remains for me to say is that episode 162 of the Interpretation Station stands adjourned. Thank you.